Hi, I'm David Lawrence, and in this video, I'm going to teach you dynamic motor control to improve your walking, your balance, and your ability to navigate obstacles in your path. So now what we're gonna look at is sidestepping and some dynamic balance drills. These are really important. Most of the time people think, well, I just wanna walk. You realize that a big portion of what we do in life is not walking straight ahead. It's sidestepping, it's turning, it's moving in different directions. And the vast majority of falls occur not in the middle of walking. They, move, they occur in the middle of turning or sidestepping or getting off balance. So we wanna work on this idea of not just walking straight ahead all the time, but also sidestepping. So again, you can do some of these drills i showing you here very simply like at the kitchen counter. So you can lean on the counter at home and go up and down the counter for support. You can do these in a hallway where you can put your hands on the wall of the hallway. But someplace where you can hold on and get moving a little bit and get the sense of lateral movement. So first of all, Tracy, all I want you to do is I want you to step towards me with your right foot. Good. And then she's going to step toward me with her prosthetic foot. What's going to tend to happen is if you look at her prosthetic foot, it's going to end up out in front. And many times when she steps forward, because of some tightness in the hip flexor, that thing is going to end up out in front. So every time, step it back out, Tracy. When you bring it in, you want to think about step in and back. So it's actually level or even behind your other toes. Why? Now that leg's really underneath her. Now it's in a power position. If it's out in front, the knee is in a position where it can buckle. And we don't, not in a power position. So I want you to repeat that a few times. Side step towards me and bring that leg in level or behind. Doesn't have to be that far behind. Kind of level or slightly behind your other toes. Good. And they just keep coming to me a few times. Get that sense of stepping it in there. And when it wants to shoot out the front, just step it back in. Then when you step away to the outside, same thing. Out and slightly back. Ooh, hold for a second. Did you see where your foot ended up in front? Mm -hmm. Right? So you want to step out and slightly back and bring the other toes over, and they should be level or slightly in front. Okay, there you go. Step, there you step, step, step. Excellent. So if Tracy's got that, and again, she makes this look easy. Over time, we have to work with these types of things and give people lots of repetitions of getting the idea of motion. But once she's got it and says, okay, I got how to sidestep, and I can level my toes up, the next progression is I want to get into more stance time on the prosthetic. So Tracy, with your hands still on the bars, all I want you to do is I want you to lift your right knee up, hold it in the air for a second, and then step out to the side. Good, bring the prosthetic over in the correct position. Good, lift up, hold that balance for a second, step over. Now all I'm doing here, again, hand at her pelvic level is keeping her pushed a little bit more towards the prosthetic device, a little more on it than she wants to be, to make sure she's really got it loaded. As she's doing better and saying, okay, I got the feel for this, then I want you to try taking your hands off and hover the hands and see if you can do the same thing. Slow it down, hold. There you go, slow it down, hold. Good, slow it down, hold. Excellent, and the same thing going back. You're gonna go back, shift over, up and hold. Now you're gonna find it's a little harder to do holding that balance going back because she has to really kind of throw her weight over the prosthetic device. And if she loses her balance at all, this is why you've got bars to hold on to, right? That's reality. This is, this is not easy stuff, even if you're very good at it. This hold position, up, hold, and down. Up, hold, and down. Now hold for a second right there, Tracy. Come on back towards me. Up, oh, a little bit up in the air. Up, hold, step. Good, up, hold, step. Right there. Now, as someone progresses with this, depending on what level you wanna to go to, you can have them say, I want you to count, hold for a two count. Up, hold for two, and then step. Up, hold for three, step. Up, hold for four. That's getting really tough. So I want to be able to do that. But you can go to whatever level the person wants to and needs to be able to go to as far as control. But they should be able to at least get that foot in the air, hold it in the air for a second, long enough if they are tripping to be able to move their foot to a stabilizing position. If they're about to step in some oil or water, they think, oh, I could change and move my foot to a different position. But if I'm falling off the prosthetic always and not really got it underneath me for stability, I'm likely to fall during those positions. Now, next thing on sidestepping is to say, if you can sidestep regular, if you can uphold balance and sidestep, the last is actually, can I sidestep with a little bit of pace? So all I want you to do now, Tracy, is I'm gonna slide back a little bit. I just want you to sidestep a few steps towards me, and then the other way, picking up the pace a little bit. 
All right, so she's there, and all she's going to do is step. There you go. And as soon as that foot comes down, move over. And then head back the other direction. Step, 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 and come back. Perfect. Now, two things you may notice on camera, and she can feel, is that sidestepping away from the prosthetic is faster. She can really move quickly away from it. When she's sidestepping to it, it slows her down a little bit, and she has to work a little harder to get over it. Why is that so important? That's important if you're getting back to any kind of recreational sports kind of activities. And you're thinking, okay, if I know it's easier to move away from the prosthetic, then I always want to bias my positioning when I'm playing a game or a sport. Like if I'm in softball and I'm playing in the outfield, I want to step towards the prosthetic side, knowing I can move away from the prosthetic much quicker. If I'm playing basketball and I'm guarding somebody, I'm going to line up on their body halfway over towards the prosthetic side. So there's not so much time for me to get left as it's much easier for me to get right. So that process picks up and just get that sense. And if just in reality, realizing it's easier for me to go one way than the other. The next drill, really important, is what we call braiding, karaoke, grapevine. People call it lots of different things. But this idea of crossing one leg over the other, establishing the foot support position, hands back on the bars, if you don't mind, Tracy. And I just want you to bring your prosthetic over the front, focus on loading it heavy, and then step out and recapture a neutral position. Now step the prosthetic behind, step out, recapture a neutral position. Two more, there you go, good, and behind. Excellent, and going back the other direction. So just keep going, slowly moving those feet as best you can. Now if you keep your eyes at Tracy's pelvis, you're gonna notice that she really has to twist her hips and has to rotate to be able to take that step. There you go, right there, and hold up right there. That's what's so important about this drill. Why is braiding so important? You say, well, do I have an 80-year-old do this? Yes, they may not do it at the same level or crossover as far, as far, but it's very important. Three reasons why crossover braiding drill is so important to you. It is the number one best stumble recovery drill. For example, if I'm in a position, I've lost my balance to the right, my weight's on my right foot. The only way to recover is to put my left foot over my right and then come back to neutral. That's my stumble recovery. And stumbles are gonna happen. Falls are what we want to prevent, right? So if you lose your balance, it's stumble recovery to get myself back to neutral. The second reason why this is so important is it teaches you how to load the prosthetic in an awkward position. Remember, prosthetic devices in general, the heavier you load on them, the more they want to stand up straight. So you want it to stand you up straight. If you step on it lightly, it could buckle or release underneath you. So you always want to think, go ahead and step across, Tracy. Even if that's in kind of an awkward, weird position, not really landing smooth on the ground, doesn't matter. Put as much weight on it as you can, and you'll find, out oh, it straightens right up. It brings me up. Now, this one's even harder. Step behind, but don't go anywhere. But think about it. She can't see the prosthetic anymore. I and mean, if you're just starting, this is an odd feeling to say, I'm on this prosthetic limb. I don't really know. I can't see it, and I've got to really load it up and trust that when I put all my weight on it, it's going to be there for me. But that's really important, loading the leg in an awkward position. And the last reason is it turns good walkers into great walkers because it's the only drill we have that works on pelvic rotation. And remember, when you walk, it's all about rotation. The smoothness, what keeps you from being a Frankenstein walk, right, is that you can rotate your pelvis and, pe and hips opposite to each other. And as you do that, that rotation gives me a smooth walk. So this is the only drill we have that works on pelvic rotation or transverse plane motion while you're on your feet and really loosens up the ability. If you've ever seen someone do this at a running pace, you'll see their arms are really moving opposite of their braiding step because they really bring in that counter rotation of the trunk and it's a great drill to go to that highest level. Now, all I want Tracy to do is a couple of repetitions of the progression of this, which is if you're going to sidestep, if you're going to crossover step, I want you to Hands on for just a second. Crossover step. Pick your other leg up, but don't put it back down. Hold your balance for a second, then step out. So again, you're just coming up to a balanced position on the prosthetic from an awkward position and holding it. Good, same thing the other direction. Right there, hold that balance and then put it down. Step out, lift up, hold that balance for a second, then choose to go around behind it. All right, up, hold, and then go around it. Good. Step, up, hold and then go behind it, all right? That's a little bit higher skill, but it's teaching Tracy, even from an awkward position, I can still find a home with balance 
and then I can rotate around it and recapture my balance control. And the third component, just like sidestepping is speed. If Tracy says, I feel pretty good about that, then we just get out of the way a little bit and say, okay, Tracy, just go ahead and don't have to be real fast, but pick up the pace as you go and just think, okay, let me see if I step, put it on the ground and get going a little bit quicker. Good, same thing the other way. That's it, pick up that pace a little bit. There you go, step it out, cross over. Step it out, cross over. Excellent, one more time coming back. Pick up that pace, come right at me, boom, stick it on the ground, stick it in 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 the ground. Again, come back to the center. That would leads us, go back to the center of the bars. That leads us in that same position that we talked about, hold right there, where we're saying, what's the most important thing? Load the prosthetic. If you load the prosthetic heavy in any drill, it's gonna give you energy back and it's gonna give you stability. So once we've got somebody sidestepping and they've got good braiding steps, the next thing we wanna work on is step variation. Step speed variation, step length variation. Why, because if I teach somebody one walk, they're walking in one gear all the time. And that's just not the way life is. There's places where you need to short step quickly and there's other places where you need to long step to cover ground uh, in a more rapid fashion. All right, so we want to work on that control and open up someone's life without going all the way to running, just simply a long step walk or versus a short step walk. So if someone's walking normal steps, we've kind of taken you through that process. But the first thing I want to teach Tracy is something called a chop step. And a chop step is a very short, fast step. I like to kind of call this my uh, movie theater gate, where if you're walking out of a movie theater in a big crowd, you can't just step out or you're going to step on somebody. But you got to keep moving. <laughs> Right, so you gotta move fast, but you gotta keep your steps really small. And that also is the same idea as even if you're walking on a slippery surface. I need to step and keep my foot down flat, don't land out on my heel, or my heel might slip out from under me. So a chop step is really this idea of she's gonna take a step forward, very aggressive step forward, but as she does, she's gonna chop that leg down and try to keep the heel inside the length of the toe on the other side. So every step is gonna be in this range, not out here, right into that range. Now the hard part is you're gonna see that her leg is gonna to wanna to stick and Z stiff and the knee's not gonna to wanna to bend. So she's gonna to have to work pretty aggressively. This is a real exercise that'll wear you out on being able to get that knee to bend and then chop it down quickly underneath her. So all I want you to do from where you're at right there is that leg's in front. There you go, good, and chop down. Chop down quickly, there you go, right down. Boom, 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 turn around. Now don't overthink it now, Tracy. Once you've got it, it is simply step and chop down quickly. There you go. Chop, 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 and shorten the other step too. There you go, there you go. Faster, 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 faster. Good, come on back. So it's almost like a popcorn drill as well. She is basically kind of pop, pop. Keep it down, keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. Good, hold up right there. As you can tell, this is not easy. She's an accomplished walker, and this is not an easy task to work on. But what it does is wears you out quickly, but it builds a lot of strength around your residual limb and in your core, and gives you a powerful short step when you need it. I'm in a party of different people, and I can't just step on people. I gotta watch where my feet go. I gotta step, step, and then get around them, okay? So the next one, then, if we go from a short step, is then is a long step. And I say to Tracy, your normal step length is gonna be you know, a certain distance, your heel out in front of your other foot. All we wanna do is accentuate that. So when you wanna go a little bit faster, say you're crossing the street and the light's turning red, yeah. right, or green, and you wanna get out of the street, you wanna get there quickly. How do I do that? I, do, I don't know how to run yet. Okay, so what I'm, all I gotta do is keep the same cadence of walking with a longer stride, and I go faster. So all I want from you, Tracy, is not too big a step to start with, but we're just gonna go back and forth a couple of times, but take a longer step out towards me. There you go, good. And then turn around, and same thing going back. Just a nice long stride, long, long stride. Excellent, come on back. Long stride, stretch it out, stretch it out. Nice, hold up right there, nice. Now one way to get someone to learn how to do this from the very beginning is this sense of when you're stepping and you want to step out there, it's almost like thinking if you're crossing a creek and there's stones. And I almost have to like take a little hop to the next stone. It kind of forces you to take that little bit of leap of faith. Because when you're just getting started, that leap of faith to throw yourself out there on the prosthetics is a little bit harder. But you'll receive from her how quickly, once she started to take the long stride, boom, she just took right off. Her speed picked up dramatically, but she didn't have to run. There was no going into a running mode at that point in time. It becomes very effective, very efficient. And then we'll work on, here in a second, some things of controlling and changing those modes and changing those speeds. You want a normal walk, you want a long stride, and you want a short chop step. 
Okay, so when we come outside the parallel bars, or as some of your patient starts to feel more confident, or as the patient, you start feeling more confident, you wanna get out into a more open area, where again, you can challenge yourself with the exact same basic drills. So, Tracy, if you don't mind, just turn facing away from me, and we're just gonna walk a little bit. We're gonna take a couple of steps. So, but let's start with this, because something we haven't talked about yet is backstepping. You want patients to have the ability to backstep. One, if you come up to a heavy door and you've got to step backwards to open that door, or someone opens something in front of you, you get startled and have to step backwards. A backwards fall is some of the worst falls. Mm -hmm. So what I want a patient to think about as far as backstepping is think every step should be a little wider than your normal step and a little shorter. So when you're here, you're basically thinking a short, wide step, almost like a backpedaling step in sports. You don't want to take a big, long, stretched out step. So all I want you to do, Tracy, with either foot first is step back. There you go. Keep your weight more on the forefoot of the prosthetic and keep stepping a little bit shorter and wider. A little bit shorter. Oh, not that wide. There you go. A little bit shorter and wider and just keep coming with both feet. There you go. There you go. Keep coming. That's it. There you go. Perfect. Turn around. Same thing going back, just a little bit shorter and wider, just a little, it doesn't have to be huge. There you go, boom, boom, boom. That way she's always in a sense of control, keeps her weight forward, relax for a second. What does that mean is when she steps back on the prosthetic, she doesn't drop her weight into the heel and fall backwards. She steps back into the prosthetic foot, keeps her weight in the forefoot, gives her stability as she steps back with her other foot. So that's your back stepping control mechanism. All right, then coming forward, excellent. Now turn around. So if I'm walking with somebody out here and I'm gonna work with them, I always wanna start with what's number one? Weight on the prosthetic. So I'm gonna push her a little bit into the prosthetic side. Tracy will tell you I'm pressing down on that left prosthetic hip, really getting her load, because that's where we're gonna start, right? Number one for us is always get load on the prosthetic, right? Once she's got that, number two is get the pelvis moving. So what we're gonna do is load the prosthetic, take a step with your right foot, pelvis goes forward, and we start walking. Right, just relax and walk. There you go, good, turn around. We'll come on back. Same principle, if I'm in front of her, I can be here and just say, okay, take that weight, push at me, good. Push at me, push me out of the way, push me out of the way. There you go, push me out of the way, nice. And relax. Now you'll notice as she started to move, her arm started to swing. Because as I'm creating some energy and pushback, that gives her some impetus to have to try to get me out of the way. Think of a sprinter running down the track. They don't have their arms at their side, right? The great energy and power, their arms are moving. But if I think, okay, Tracy's got it. She's got a lot of good weight on the prosthetic. She can drive that hip forward to initiate that step. I'm gonna come up and help her with just say, all you think about is that powerful pelvis motion, and I'm gonna help you with shoulder action. So just relax and go ahead and take a step. Good. And I'm just gonna relax and help her get that shoulder action. Hold right there turn around and come back, same issue. I can be in front of her, go ahead and walk right at me, boom. There you go, good, just get out of her way and bring those hips into the equation. Now, if I'm here and I say, okay, Tracy, we've got it, we're working out pretty well, all I want you to do is we're gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna have you step and I'm gonna give you a command as to what we wanna do different. So, all I want you to do is just take a normal step forward and now go ahead and step and chop step. Boom, boom, get that knee bending. There you go, there you go, good. Hold and backwards, walk backwards. A little bit wider, uh-huh, exactly. Good, a little bit wider, excellent. That's good, a little bit narrower, good. Now giant step forward, good, that normal step. And hold, turn around and come back to me. Start right off with a chop step, don't work too hard, just get it in the ground, there you go. Get in the ground, just walk through it, walk through it, walk through it, good, walk a normal step. Good, turn around and walk normal back. And now long step, giant step, and stop. Excellent, turn sideways, good, and sidestep towards me. Excellent, sidestep away from me, good. Come back again, hold right there. Now this time, every time you move your sound foot, I want you to hold in the air for a couple of seconds. Good, step, hold in the air for a couple of seconds, good. Hold in the air for a couple seconds, good. Go back the other way. That's it. Hold it in the air for a second. Hold it, good. Hold it, good. Hold it, good. Now I just want to come back to me quickly. Yep. Boom, yep, and away from me quickly. Good, hold right there. Now just cross over towards me, not speed, just take your time. And braiding, karaoke, there you go. Excellent, 
Good. Trey braiding away from me. Good. Excellent. Now pick up the pace. Come back towards me with speed. Boom. 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 And away with me. Away with speed. Boom. Boom. Excellent. Good. Come back to the center. So what we've got with Tracy is the idea of walking through with confidence and then put her in all different positions. Sideways, backwards, crossover step, and forward long step, short step, and all that on command. Because at that point, she starts to stop thinking. We know it's kind of from athletes. You get to a point where you get in the zone, you almost stop thinking about it, you just play. And once you've got those basic skills, you want that in life. You don't have to think on every step in life. You want to start to relax a little bit and let it come to you. Now, just so you know, in every patient, that's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take weeks to months to really establish a sense of feeling of control and a feeling of confidence over their competent limb motion. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on prosthetic interventions, ranging from managing the residual limb after amputation to running with a prosthesis. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. To stay up to date on our latest content, click the link in the corner to subscribe and let us know what you think in the comments section below.